What entity created the most controversial airport? Could there be a cursed object that thousands of people walk by every day? What secret messages are written in the art, the floors, of a government building? Today we test the believability of the conspiracies of the Denver airport. Welcome to Believing the Bizarre, where we dive into the unknown and the unusual and tell you whether or not we find it believable. This is a big one. Oh, yeah. This is one that big I think conspiracy. I think there's a wide spectrum of like what people know about it. You're going to yeah. get the people that have never heard of it, and that's cool mm-hmm. and welcome. Mm-hmm. Um, but I feel like every – that just goes against what I just said. It's the people that know about the airport, there's like the, yeah, I know it's weird, but I don't really know why. To like, mm-hmm. I know about like certain statues. And that's where I was at, earlier this week even. That's where I'm at right now. I know there's like weird things. I know there's statues and there's, you know, supposedly underneath it and things like that. But I there's a lot I don't know. And so I'm very excited to deep dive on this airport that I've never been to. Okay, let's calm down with deep dive. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> but it's a dive. It's definitely a dive. There's some interesting facts and things I learned about this topic. Denver's pretty wild in general, but this oh, I just, I just want to go to Red Rocks. And even though he was only <laughs> there for like two or three years, whenever I think of Denver, I just still think of Peyton Manning. My favorite podcast, last podcast, got to play at Red Rocks yeah. or perform at Red Rocks, and you know, good for them. That would be a dream. I just you know, that's fine. If they're going to do it again, they should call us. The conspiracy is that every time Peyton Manning walks into the Denver airport, his forehead gets an inch bigger. (laughs) Or is it just a fact? Omaha. I heard you talking to Ben about how I don't bring up football enough. Oh, yeah. I don't bring it up enough for you. That's okay. I just don't know that much about it. No, I think think the listeners would prefer that you don't bring up football. (laughs) You know there's a ball that, that can be kicked sometimes, but it's mostly thrown. All right. Now, don't act like you don't know football <laughs> now. Try and get some points. I, I do know some things. Greg Little, you know. It's been a while since oh, he's yeah, done Oh, yeah. That was team. like 10 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> Gosh. So let's start off with some, like, base knowledge because a lot of this isn't going to make sense if you don't know what the NWO is. What is an airport? <laughs> <laughs> Planes land there. You, you're very familiar with airports recently. Yeah. Oh, my God. Because we got the New Jersey thing. Yeah. We stayed there for like the whole night. It was – but like ter- – anyway, airports. Do you know what the NWO is? Uh, New World Order. Yes. They were uh, Hulk Hogan. I was going to say it's a wrestling yeah. thing. What's the wrestling thing? It's Hulk Hogan. Let's get that out was of here. Was it Shawn Michaels? I can't remember. I don't know. Uh, are you not going to – no, I don't know anything about it. Oh, okay. It was, it's just, it was a gimmick. It was a faction in. Well, here's the thing. The New World Order is something else. It's not Hulk Hogan? It is that. <laughs> but also it's like. It's the meme where the, everyone thinks like if someone is calling someone else a racist, like there's that meme of of uh, Hulk Hogan and he's he's writing an N in spray paint and he's going to write NWO. Uh-huh. But people typically act like it, he's going to write oh, another bad word. I see. No. It's the, not that. No, it's not that. The is it overpriced or, coffee? <laughs> I just want to tell you what okay, it is. Okay, what is it? It's the accomplishment of what the Illuminati is trying to do. Mm. They're trying to make the New World Order. So I'm going to use Illuminati and New World Order interchangeably here. But what it is, it is the goal of the Illuminati. It is this order, in theory. It's a group of the richest of rich people, and they meet and they work and manipulate the world. And they try to bring it down into a path of dystopia. Mm. Dystopia being, you know. The opposite of utopia. Exactly. Bad. <laughs> I will Every say, teen novel. I think there's so many people that are upset with the status quo that it wouldn't be a bad time for someone to come in and shake it up. And let me just say this as a disclaimer, because I know that there's, there's people out there. There are people that stay up until four in the morning, multiple days a week watching YouTube conspiracy videos. And so there's probably going to be some listeners 
that no certain angles about New World Order or Illuminati that we're not going to cover in this episode. That's going to be less than an hour. That's for so sure. I need you to kind of like – like obviously any episode that we ever get anything wrong, by all means, hit us up. Be like, hey, actually it's this or I'm from the area. You were off a little bit. But in terms of like scratching the surface versus like what somebody who spends months and months diving into this might know, I just want to set the stage that like this isn't going to be one of those rabbit hole things. Right. Am this I right? Is, Am I yeah, correct no, in that? This isn't – this. To be, because this isn't really about the Illuminati or the New World Order. They're a facet of this, but they're not entirely the whole thing. I'm just trying to set the stage because, like, there's – It's not going to touch what people want. It's, I know it's, it's not going the, to. It's the it's – it's, honestly, it's part of why we don't do a ton of conspiracy stuff. It's because people get very touchy about those things. They do. So I just want to – before we even get into it, because I know we've talked about it a little bit off air, I just want to set the expectation that, like – don't be like, oh, you guys didn't even touch on this because, you know, we're, we're here less than an hour. That's kind of like our, our format. Yeah. But with that, am I right? Am You're I okay? 100% right. Like, okay. I'm, I'm not going to, like, this isn't just about the New World Order. Like, I'm just kind of laying the groundwork here. Yeah. I just want to set that stage. Um, so part of their goal is another way to get this NWO is to set this dominant governant and control people through tragedy. Now, the Denver airport is said to be one of these bases, if not the main headquarters for the Illuminati NWO Mm -hmm. meetings, if you will. So by like setting tragedy, some people would argue that like they set up 9-11 to spark a tragedy, to spark a war, like oil and goods. And some people say they they cause natural disasters like hurricanes, tornadoes, typhoons, those kinds of things. Yeah. Yeah, some people say all the all the real misery in the humankind so far that we've witnessed and seen has been this Illuminati, the Cleveland Browns. <laughs> They're owned by the Illuminati. <laughs> they hate us. Now, I'm not exactly positive why they chose Denver. Now, I but if I had to guess, it's because it's an international airport mm-hmm. and it's central to the United States. They like hiking. I don't think that's it. No, <laughs> no they really don't. No. Maybe I wonder actually it's the mile high city. I wonder if being cuz you know like at, <laughs> hate to bring it back to this. Athletes hate traveling there cuz yeah. the lower oxygen level. Mm-hmm. I wonder like prolonged amount of time or maybe not prolonged. Like people that are traveling to the Denver airport, people that travel to Denver and they're not used to that level of oxygen. I don't have in front of me like the side effects that people feel. Like I just know it's I know, not like good. headedness is I know it's not good for athletes. I wonder if it puts people in more of a state of where you can influence them because of the lower oxygen level. I mean, when I'm out of breath, you can tell me anything. I'd probably go with it. Is that is that an is that a theory though that like I, I holds, don't I don't think it might I don't know, maybe. I'm just saying out of like every international airport, I wonder maybe, maybe this, you know, it's interesting to think that maybe it's just because the lower oxygen influences us just enough where maybe they can get either subliminal things or. Well, it's just kind of, to me, I think it's just because it's kind of central to the United States. You can get there from New York, L.A. in a reasonable amount of time. And it's also unassuming enough where it's not an L.A., a Miami, a New York. Yeah, it's Denver. Like, it's a big city. It's got a football team, but it's Denver. They just won the NBA championship. And I've offended too. everyone in Denver. Okay, so I've got, I've got five points I want to go over about the Denver airport. First one is 1A, second one's 1B. They kind of go together. That's like uh, your um, gates. Yes, exactly. Right. Taking off at 1A, there might be a slight delay. So who built the Denver airport and what for? The airport was actually built and funded, according to a plaque outside of the building, quote, the New World Airport Commission. Okay. Not, not too uh, obvious there. No, no, it sounds, I mean, right. it sounds pretty, you know, kind of like someone who'd build an airport. Now, the strange thing is that this group does not exist. Okay, maybe they went bankrupt. The weird thing is that it never existed. There's no record of this company. Hmm. What if it was like multiple companies and they just... Or like a conglomerate. Or like a DBA. Mm-hmm. What's interesting about that is that there would be a record. There's no record for this company. So that's really weird. 
And people have taken this as a theory that this was a shell company for the New World Order. Mm. Like they were being pretty obvious, even the first couple of letters. It's almost like that that hiding in plain sight where mm-hmm. it's like so many people are like, you know, they tell you exactly what they're going to do, right? Like yeah. it's, they're putting it. It's almost like a mockery. It's like you can't do anything about mm-hmm. it. Like we're not even trying to hide it at this point. Another strange thing about this airport is that there's another plaque. And this is on the cornerstone of the building. And this plaque on the cornerstone of the building sits on a time capsule. And it says on top, it says, quote, to the people of Colorado in 2094. Along with this engraving, there are two images, a, quote, Masonic square and a compass. Now, to some... What do you mean by Masonic square? Like Masons, like Freemasons. Okay. The, you know, the thing... Parker. <laughs> <laughs> the thing Parker has on his car? Yeah. Yes. So... This Masonic square and compass are, to some people, like almost like putting a stamp that this is the New World Order doing this. It is one of their big symbols is the Freemasons are attached to the Illuminati New World Order conspiracies. We're probably not going to make it to the uh, opening of it. 2094? We'd be over 100. I don't know. You think we're going to live over 100? There have been a lot of uh, medical researches. I've I've seen articles saying if you were born past 19, like 80, there's a chance you could live till like 140. So I don't think this body's lasting until 140. I mean, I think yours could for I, sure. I don't. I don't think so. You've, you're <laughs> such a pessimist. <laughs> anyway, anyway, that was neither here nor there. This one, it, could this one not just be like an innocent time capsule? Yeah, that's the thing about all these conspiracies. I think that if you look at them all individually, they could all be just coincidences. However, when you stack them all together, we talked about this before, this theory that in like a haunting or something, maybe, maybe the windows open. Okay. Maybe that's just a coincidence. But if there's a window opening, there's mist, there's things that add up to a haunting. Is it not a haunting? So I think that's the question here. Are all these little coincidences of a conspiracy, do they add up to a coincidence? Mm. Do they add up to a conspiracy? That's my real question here. Maybe it's just like the first ever Cinnabon. What? Because Cinnabons, there's so many Cinnabons in airports. Maybe it was like the first Cinnabon. They put it down there. Like they wrapped it in a plastic bag, but that's like what's Are in the time capsule. Are you saying Cinnabon is Cinnabon. part of the New World Order? No, I'm saying that's what's in the time capsule. Oh. They hey, listen. They, I didn't I, know where you're going with that. You told me that it's a time capsule, right? Yes, there's something in the kind of – I don't know what's in there. Cinnabon. If you <laughs> told me that New World Order was behind Cinnabon, there are certain places – like honestly, if they were like New World, New World Order is behind Facebook, would you be shocked – or make, m- McDonald's. Cinnabon was behind Facebook? Sorry. N- no. If okay. New World Order yes. was behind McDonald's, would you be shocked? No. No yeah. way at all. That makes sense. <laughs> Can I get an Illuminati meal, please? <laughs> um, it comes with a little triangle hat. There's going so so to be so many people that are so pissed that we're joking about this. Now, I know that there's a lot of people that attach Freemasons to the Illuminati and things like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm not super educated on that. I know that's not really the scope of this episode. I'm just kind of laying it out there. Like, I know that's a connection, but that's not something I've ever... I'm going to be real honest. I'm not either. That's I know, not what I'm focused on here. A couple of my... Well, I didn't know if you knew from past. Mm-mm. I know one of my friends who really is, is into this note. Like, he has a strong feeling about Freemasons, but... I, I don't... I, I didn't brain. look into what actually makes it up or the conspiracies are about them. Yeah. This is more just saying that, hey... People think they're here. His belief is that the majority of majority of Freemasons don't know what they're in. That's kind of his his mindset. Interesting. I could I could see that. Yeah. Now there's also more evidence here about the building. The original budget was set at a certain limit, but of course it went over. Now why would the budget go over? I why feel do like you think? most budgets probably go over. Yes, it went over buildings. a fair amount though. The theory is that this extra budget was necessary. Because it was meant to use to build the underground bunker Mm. where the Illuminati meets. Now, this is from Wikipedia, but 
They went over budget. How much do you think they went over budget by? Two hundred guess. Two hundred million. More. Uh, seven hundred million. More. A billion. They went over by two billion. They went over budget by two billion dollars. Well, it's paid for by a company that doesn't exist. So that's fake money. You might as well be using <laughs> Monopoly money. Who well, cares? It's it's that New World Order money. <laughs> they were like, what all the builders are like, we're going to pay you when it's done. <laughs> <laughs> Just keep going, guys. Just keep going. We'll, pay, we'll double it. You know, if you're getting time and a half. Just keep <laughs> <laughs> Jerry, tell, I'm not telling him. I'm not telling him. Just, you, got, you guys are doing great. Just keep going. Yeah, get yeah. the time capsule over there. Very good. Yeah. So now this is 1B we're on to now. Okay. The airport is laid out like... I'm just going to say it, a swastika. Oh, I thought it was a pentagram. No, a swastika. Now, it's Wait, believe- Go what, ahead. what year was this built? It was built in 1995. Okay. Why? Well, swastika, 40s, 30s, I didn't know. Mm-mm, no, it's older than that. Um, it's, well, it's, it's newer. newer than that. Yeah. yeah, it's way newer than They should know better. It's younger than I am. Now, the thing is, some people say that the the, the way it's built is actually a pinwheel, because that's it's a kind of a common way to lay out airports in this pinwheel fashion. Mm-hmm. But the way they have it, and I'm not going to lie, you do have to kind of squint. Um, but the way it's set up, it says to look like a Nazi uh, Nazi symbol, a, um, a, a swastika. And it's supposed to pay homage to the idea that the Illuminati and the NWO is very anti-Semitic. Mm. And it's a, it, it's a – that's one of the reasons why it's terrible because it's – is anti-Semitic, anti anything other than, you know, white. Blue eyes, white. Mm-hmm. Aryan? Is that the Aryan, one? yeah. It's it's this evil kind of corporation. It's like the architect built it. It was like, it's great. And then he looked at it again as they started building it. He's like, oh shit. Oh, no. Nobody I didn't. tell him. <laughs> Can we add like that's why they went over budget. They're like, we need to add another wing. They're like, why? He's like, just keep building. <laughs> just keep building. I do have a picture of the airport. I mean, those big red lines definitely help. <laughs> they do guide you a little bit. Um, I, that like that's like I feel like seeing faces in like rocks and trees know. and stuff. Like, I don't know, man. I've been general... on the edge of this. Like, I feel like I've been like both ways, like for a couple of days now. There's two, but there's like two layers to it. Like one that they intentionally built it that way, and then two, like uh, like I don't mean like intentionally built it for nefarious reasons i mean like one that it's actually that shape because it's like the red line is guiding your eyes and everything yeah so like one if you buy that it is actually physically that shape that's part one and then part two is that they built it that way and there were ill intentions you know what i mean like they feel like there's two parts to it it is it is it's like they're it's it's a wink, an homage. It's it's a because there could be that they built it that way without thinking what it looked like, and it's harmless. I mean, because you see it right. Well, you do plan it out from an aerial perspective when you're drawing things, and designing things, right? But just like without those red lines and just the way it was, they might not have been like. I don't know. I in the nine. I don't know. Nineteen ninety five. Well, they probably did in like ninety one or ninety two when they were planning it. They, you know, I don't think they were like make sure. It doesn't look like a SWAT sticker. <laughs> the number one architect rule. No penises, no SWAT stickers, no pentagrams. I don't know. I'm on the, That's I'm like, architect 101. I really am 50-50. Like, you're right. The red lines help. But I've seen it without the red lines. Yeah. I mean, hey. Can I ever not see it without them, though? Like, it, like the FedEx logo. Like, I can't not see the FedEx, the arrow in the FedEx yeah. logo. But that's part one. So it's like, okay, if you believe that it is built that way – yeah. Do you also believe that it was built that way specifically for the intention? That, that comes back to the question. Do all these little things add up to the conspiracy? Don't know. Don't know yet. Let's you still got to convince yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on to number two, the cursed statue. Mm. You know the statue, yes? That's- Have you ever seen it? In person? No, no, no. I've seen pictures, yeah. Okay. Very blue. They call it Blucifer. Did you know that? Blucifer? Blucifer. I thought you said blue silver. For no. Blucifer. Blucifer. Like Lucifer, but blue. Okay. Blucifer. Now, the statue called Lucifer, it was originally called Mustang. Now, there are some questions about it. Like, why is it so big? Why was it delayed for so long? Is there a hidden entrance for the meeting place for the Illuminati underneath it? 
questions we've all asked ourselves. Yes. So, Lucifer is a giant. It's it's very big. It's a horse rearing up on its hind legs. Hind legs. It's a kelpie. Kind of like a, a stallion, kind of defying. Like a bronco. Like a bronco, a mustang, and it is blue. Cobalt, bright blue. The eyes, however, are red. And that's what it is. It's just this giant horse. Now, why is it a horse? I don't know. Football? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure, really. There must be. Are there, like, horses in the area? Is it, like, a big horseback riding? The meaning I've seen behind it, it says that it's supposed to represent the freedom of the West. Okay. Yeah. That, this, okay. Oh, well, sure. Yeah. Sure. Um. So the statue known as Mustang started with murder. It originally killed its creator. A 9,000-pound section of the statue fell onto the man and cut an artery in his leg. And he died. From bleeding out. Yeah. The Mustang was revealed two years later in 2008 to the public. And since then, it's been a controversial piece. People think that because the blue statue killed its maker, it has a curse on it. The Mustang has been insured by the state, for over $2 million. But it only costs around 300000 to actually build. Why was it insured for so much? There's nothing really about the statue that makes it... How much was it insured for? $2 million. So that's... I, I can't do that. <laughs> it's a lot more. Yeah. It's like um, four times. There's not like a lot times. of buildings around it to fall onto it. There's nothing that can actually... Take it down except for the harshness of the weather in the area. Is it? It's outside? It's outside. What about vandalism, maybe? I don't know how much vandalism can actually do to it because it is very big. Well, the – I mean the airport costs $2 billion, So maybe they were like, yeah, it only costs 300000 but f- it. Let's just make it worth $2 million. <laughs> I, Maybe. I don't know. It's just like added precaution just because – and it did take the man's life. I, 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 I really do question why they put so much insurance on it. But to such a big entity, maybe it's not that big a deal. I think it would be interesting to compare to other things in the airport, right? Mm-hmm. Like right now, we're looking at only this horse and what it cost to build versus what it was insured for. Yeah. Without looking at anything else in the airport and what it costs versus what it would be insured for. Maybe it's something across the board for the airport. We are taking, you're right, we are taking the micro view on this. Maybe taking the macro view, you would see that this is common. Don't know. Not sure about that. It does seem high, though. Some also believe that this statue is the actual meeting place for the Illuminati. Underneath it. Underneath. It's said that because this place is so secluded, it is it is next to the airport, but it's also kind of a secluded area. Like it's not by any big buildings or anything. That it's in the middle of nowhere that they are able to get away and also be next to the airport. But also they say that there's power in the statue because there's speculation because of how the Mustang was built because it killed its creator that there's some blood magic there. Because of that blood magic, they're using it. You follow? Yeah, it's funny to think that maybe it was just a normal everyday horse statue and it's like worth 300000 that's it. And then it accidentally killed its owner. They're like, oh, shit. Like, yeah. we got to take advantage of this. Yeah, that's kind of what it is, though. Like, they, they because of that, and it's they're going to use the power it channeled. They originally were going to use the power of the Cinnabon. But then, <laughs> but then once they killed the owner, they're like, we're going to use the power of the trans fat. Yeah. Okay, so that's that's the statue. People think it's cursed because of that, but let's move on to the map coordinates. The coordinates to the Denver airport have said to be reported in a place of public record that most people are familiar with. Most people can find the airport, right? That's a dumb question. Of course, Google Maps. Of course you know where it is. Now, if I had to use a map to drive there from Ohio, probably not. But these coordinates were reported before the airport was there. The movie, Close Encounters of the Third Kind, which, you know, bra- oh, uh, aliens. brackets, uh, is it's supposed to have its own conspiracy theory about how Steven Spielberg actually worked with the government and aliens to make the movie <laughs> oh. to get the people used to the idea of aliens actually 
communing with humans. Sure. Put that in the back burner and then turn it off because we're not going to get to it on this episode. <laughs> it has coordinates in that movie that the aliens give to the humans of 40, 36, 10, and 104, 44, 30 west. I don't know how to record it, but they claim that these coordinates are to the Devil's Tower in Wyoming. However, it's said that these coordinates are actually to the place where the Denver airport would be built. Mm. And that's a fact? Like, it really is? Like, those are the coordinates to? They're not. Oh. Okay. <laughs> this one's debunked. Oh. Okay. Like, he, it's not. I'm sorry for killing that. <laughs> it's okay. Before the discussion. <laughs> no, Does it go to Wyoming? Be real honest. No, it goes to Colorado. Oh, that's good. It goes to Colorado. It goes pretty north of Denver. I see. Red Rocks. I think that this one has traction just because of that Spielberg conspiracy. It's pulling in other things to try and make that conspiracy. That is my biggest gripe with conspiracies is that it can get dangerous. Not like not like that conspiracy is necessarily dangerous. But like, I mean, I guess we live in a world where there's like a lack of fact checking. And yeah. even us, like we we rely on – like we cross check. But we rely on sources to give us good information because we're, you know, mm-hmm. and, you know, it's it's tough because, like, if if you just told me that over dinner. You'd totally believe me. I'd believe you. And then I would go home and I would tell Claire. And then, yep. you know, it's just – and then it just happens. It just, it's, it's infectious that way. Yeah. If you put those coordinates into Google Maps like I did, you would see where it actually goes to. It's just some It's farm. just Area 51. <laughs> no. no big deal. It's some farm north of – way north of Denver. I bet so many people probably go there and this farmer's like, God damn it. I bet they do, honestly. But yeah, it's it's just – it. I was a little let down when I did figure it out it was not real. Yeah. Because I was like, that's so cool. It's bringing in one of my favorite things, aliens. This spot is supposed to be the airport. It's it's all connecting and it's not. Mate, what if it's not – what if it's $2 billion because it, it is the – it's the only airport in the world for planes and spaceships. What if there's a whole section that we can't see? They got it like covered up with like what is it called? Where it's high, um, like you can't see. It's like, like a mirror. No. Oh, like we were talking about it in the very first episode mm-hmm. where you said it was like a oh, like um hologram. Yeah. Hologram. So what if it's like just hologram where it just looks like it's a, you know. Like maybe if you saw the whole thing, then the horse would make sense, and all these you know other things really would make sense. You know what's really funny about that, though? I didn't really have it in here, but there's another theory that the Denver airport is way bigger than it should be. Like by a couple, someone said that it's like a one of the builders was like, it's the size of two Manhattans. Mm. I guess it's really big. You know, what airport is really too big, Miami. God damn, never it. been. There. It takes forever to get around there, but um. Yeah, so what if it's not just for airplanes? What if it's for airplanes and like a UFO is visiting Earth and it's like, oh, stop at Denver. It's part of the public sector? Yeah. Pro- the public sector? I'm trying to go to, to Phoenix. Well, you got to stop at Denver first. Mm, and it's then a layover. We'll, and then I you have my own ship. That doesn't make sense. Turn into your – it's like a private airport for Welcome them. to United. Everyone else crashes in Roswell and stuff. But if you, if you got a nice private UFO, yeah. private spaceship with cup holders, then, you know, you land at Denver. That's what I think. That's my – I'm going to put that out there on Wikipedia so then the next podcast can – It is really strange that you said that though because that is a theory that that there's this network of underground tunnels and the airport is much bigger than it should be because of things like that. It's I love when you see something. You don't know if it's true and it's creepy. Like have you seen like the – and we might have even talked about it on here. Like the, the map that oh, – like it's an overlap map. It's like places with the most disappearances – and, yes, and I've, then it's also I like tunnel about. system, like yeah. Earth's tunnel system completely overlaps with so many different national forests and where people go missing. And mm-hmm. it's like that's terrifying. Could be fake, but for right now, while I'm scrolling through Instagram, that's creepy. I mean, in my head, it just shows people falling in holes, <laughs> just big holes. Yeah, I don't know. Um, so the next theory is gargoyles in the airport are evil. No one looks at a gargoyle and is like. That looks good. That looks nice. Mm-hmm. I guess if you're like an old, old, 
like places with very rich history. Like, you know, if you're yeah. in like Rome mm-hmm. or like Paris or something. Or, yeah. Like you see Notre Dame or something. Like if you're going somewhere specifically for like looking at architecture, then yeah. you can be like, I still don't really like them or know why they're there. Mm-hmm. They start singing to me like in um, Hunchback, right? Yeah. But like in 1995, I don't think they really needed to add gargoyles. <laughs> they thought they did. Um, there are gargoyles that are hung on the walls of the airport. That's where the rest of the budget was. <laughs> they're not huge. They're pretty small, but they're there. They said that these gargoyles are meant to be a symbol of protection used in the archaic sense. Terry Allen was quoted by saying, there's an article quotes him that says, when I ask him if he intended anything to be evil, he swiftly denies it. He said, quote, it's actually the opposite. They're protectors. Gargoyles are good demons. They face out from the church to keep people, to keep the bad demons out. If I was being malicious, I could have been a lot more malicious than I was. End quote. It's a weird quote. It's a strange thing to say. Weird threat at the end. (laughs) I could have been way worse. I just want to check fun. So Hunchback of Notre Dame or Notre Dame, however you say it, came out in 1996. I wanted to see if it was 95. It's like these aligned, but not that that would mean anything so i have um, a picture of the gargoyle yeah i've seen that you've seen that mm-hmm. interesting i've i've looked into the the airport okay not not deep but you know just because so many people talk about it yeah. but i i, I guess i kind of do understand his reasoning his I, logic i guess I it does like it. it's you know it's almost like an homage to those like old protecting places but why like it's all it's just so it's an odd choice for a place like an airport Yeah, it's strange. I don't know. (laughs) Like anything that we need protected from, like inflated food pricing or beer pricing or delayed flights, it's not working. So No. But maybe it's protecting us from – maybe it would be a very haunted airport. Maybe it would be – maybe it is protecting us from all these natural things that could be happening. I've never been, so I – I haven't either. All right. So I have have one more. Secret messages in the art. Now this one – I don't know enough about, but I, I feel like I could get behind this one. It's just – the imagery is so weird. I'm just going to go with that. The imagery is so weird. This I have this one painting. There are several others, but I'm going to focus on this one because I think it's the most reflective. Reflective of that, like, there's something going on here. Mm-hmm. And they just decide to put it out. Um, So this painting, it is a – Nazi soldier, all in green. He has a gun and a saber, sword. And in his wake, there are women and children crying. On the bottom corner, there is a letter from a 14-year-old who died in Auschwitz. And the, the Nazi that's holding the gun seems to be defying... Symbols of peace, like a rainbow and a dove. What do you mean defying? Defiling. 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 Destroying. Peeing on them? Cutting them. Okay. With his saber? Yes, the saber. His lightsaber. And there is, there are also buildings in rubble behind him as well. So it just seems that there's this ominous message of maybe there is no peace. At at least it's kind of portraying the Nazi soldier as bad. Yes, but it's also putting him in this this foreground. Oh, you see the picture. It's putting him in this foreground where it just it makes him prominent. And I don't know why you'd put that there unless now the artist says that he did this because it was um he was showing the world as he saw it, which is what art is basically. Yeah, I mean he's got also like that like skull gas mask looking. Mm-hmm. Like gas chambers. Like it is, it is disturbing. Like, and he has almost like a superhero pose. Mm -hmm. So I I see what you mean by being not just in the foreground, but like almost like I'm taking action. Portrayed as like he is the hero. Yeah. In a sense. And it just, it, and also I know gas is said to be a weapon that the New World Order is supposed to use, want to use. I feel like it's like – it feels like if it was an artist with good intentions, it's like a cruel reminder. Like no matter how good life might be or how easy we have it now, don't forget what took place before. 
that would be that's like, the best way to put that. Yeah, that's the most positive interpretation. It's interesting that like ima- like imagine these artists pitching their designs to these people that are spending two billion dollars uh-huh. on mm-hmm. an airport, and like okay, you're doing flowers, awesome. Like oh okay, you're gonna do some some Denver scenery in the distance. Cool. What yeah. are you doing? Ah, uh, pff- uh, okay. Hear me out. Nazi soldier mm-hmm. cutting a dove, baby crying. Uh huh. And like a very uh, grotesque gas mask looking, like I can work around things. Like I can have a rainbow in there. He's destroyed. Yeah, 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 yeah. How does that sound? I think instead of the Denver skyline, yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. think I think we're gonna go with your idea. Okay. Like, what is the rationale then? It'll be about two million dollars, <laughs> although you can insure it for fifty million. Perfect. It's it is wild. I, it does feel like there's almost a threat there. That is laid out, which is crazy. Well, it's the hiding in plain sight thing again. It's a hundred percent what it is. They've not only <laughs> hidden plain sight, they've put their thesis in plain sight. And it's also crazy too, because the Denver airport, I don't know if you've ever seen this, but they've gotten like aware. And like whenever there's like construction there, which is fairly often, they put up these walls, these barriers, and they play with the idea that they're actually holding a lum- um I've seen some signs that yeah. they put up where they're, like, joking about it. They're joking about it. How blatant is that? It depends who's in control of that. Because I think if you want to be- – if you believe this is true but you also want to have belief in humanity, the people that are probably – like, let's say – this is just from for simplicity purposes. I know this isn't true. Let's say 100 people work for the Denver airport. I know that's not true but just, you know. I would say 97, per- 97 of them are not – in it. Like if you believe that there's yeah. dark stuff happening mm-hmm. there, I would still say 97% of them don't believe it. So like the person in charge of construction or the person in charge of marketing that makes that sign, no, like they were looking for a job. Denver airport was hiring. They know the history. So they mm-hmm. play with it. Like, I don't think that person's in on it, but if you do believe that there's nefarious things happening in the background, I think they like that they're joking about it. Cause yeah. it's like, if it you, takes it off. If you got right? something out there, it's like, let me joke about it before you joke about mm-hmm. it. Or even like, oh, there's people like – Steer like, into the skid, right? Flipping, yeah, flipping it on its head where it's like instead of getting defensive and making like, oh, of course you don't want us talking about it. You're mm-hmm. silencing us or, you know, you're hiding it. It's like, oh, we're going to joke about it. Do something about it. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. So with that, let's uh, let's talk more about this in the discussion. This is the part of the episode where we like to stop and thank all those that have become new members of the Patreon as of the recording of this episode. We've got a pretty good list because we wrote this after our three-year anniversary, which was a fantastic time. Yeah, last episode we didn't get a chance to... Well, go ahead. Say the shout Yeah, the here's the here's people first. Yeah. We're just so excited. We've got Beth, Jaybird, Brian, the baby Noah... <laughs> Maury, Keely, DeGenti, Jaden, Carly, Melissa, and Morgan. Thank you for stopping in. Appreciate you. Thank you for being with us on this journey. We've got some things that we want to showcase for you right now that you probably have access to. Oh, yeah. I, I'm so excited now that we've... So last episode, we, we it was technically after the live stream, but this is the first time we've recorded since the live stream. Thank you to everybody that came out. Thank you to everybody who submitted short stories that we told on there. They were a lot of fun. Shout out producer Ben for coming, sticking with us the whole time. Playing, We played a segment, Do You Believe the Bazaar, which yeah. is one of our Patreon segments. Charlie got us some celebration cake. I did. It was a long stream. It was a long live stream, but it was fun. It's up on YouTube if you want to rewatch it. But it was a really good time. Thankfully, technical difficulties were at minimum and or mm-hmm. zero. Mm-hmm. But I'm, I'm glad we did that, and it was a lot of fun. And we got to introduce the Knot Tier. Yeah. Why don't you tell us something about the Knot Tier, Tyler? You want me to pick one thing that I would like to highlight? Yeah. Okay, this is something that I love. It is what got me into horror, horror movies. I love scary movies. I get in kicks where I'll watch, like, three of them at a time, back to back to back, and I'll, for, I'll forget, like, the first two. It's, it's actually not very good. It's been a long time since I've been to a theater watching one. But uh, while Charlie's not a huge horror movie fan, no. producer Ben is. We already watched one. This segment, Horror Movie Review, 
is it's some of them are going to be event based where me and producer Ben, maybe even Charlie occasionally get together and watch a horror movie and we talk about it. We review it. <laughs> we get on that Jeremy Johns. Um, but this is also like, Hey, I'm at home. I just randomly feel like watching a scary movie and I'm going to find my way to a microphone and tell you about it. I love horror movies. I want to talk about them. I like talking about them. So if you like horror movies, um, feel free to send recommendations. But this is a segment that I'm I'm super pumped about. Something I'm really excited about is it's it's only available if you get it this year. Ooh. It is the enamel pen pin pin the enamel pin. And the thing about the enamel pin, it doesn't sound. It, it's just it's just this exclusive thing you can only get. If you join in 2023, it is the most exclusive thing we offer. Because yes. if you join one of our other tiers, you can get the shirt or the hoodie anytime. Mm-hmm. But this is yearly based. So if you join next year, you cannot get this pin. And the only time you could get that pin would be next year. Yep. It's, and so if you join this year and leave before next year, you don't you obviously. Now, leave. I mean, now it is <laughs> it is it is a, a long time. It is a year. But it is there is still some exclusivity to it because and, it just is what it is and the years fly by so before you know it it's going to be 2035 and we plan on sticking around as long as we can so you yeah. can be one of those cool people that's like i have every and you know what maybe if if we reach a certain level and you've been a, a patron long enough you can sell on ebay like i got the first 10 pins and maybe you can make two billion dollars <laughs> maybe you could and then you can build your own airport and then yeah. you can put your own spooky artwork up there yeah how's that that's good there's, I just I just outline your next 10 years of life, everyone. Yeah. You're welcome. Uh, well, with that outline, let's get back to the episode. So, the Denver airport. Let's talk about this, like, really. Like, really? Like, really. Now, remember that idea. Do all these little conspiracies amount to a big conspiracy? Do all these little plants make a big plant? Now, do you think it's feasible? Now, that's not necessarily, like, that it's... Did you see all these little planets make a big planet? Little plant make a big plant. Oh, okay. Because then um, I started thinking, do all these planets make a solar system? <laughs> but plants, I like That's that. good, too. Okay. Um, is it feasible that not necessarily the Illuminati or the NWO are using the Denver Airport, but maybe it is some kind of governmental hub? Now, not necessarily not evil, not anything like that. Just what if there are... Places that we don't really know. I, I think there must be places that the go, the populace does not know. Yeah, I mean, I think it's it would be crazy to think that like China launches a nuke at the United States. Where's the president going? Right, right. Like I think, and if we found out, oh yeah, there's a safety bunker underneath the Denver airport for high ranking officials. We'd be like, makes sense. It does kind of make sense. You know, or uh, where was it? It was the South Dakota, right? Where yeah. all the bunkers that mm-hmm. we were, you can buy your own bunker. It could be useless for me. Here. You can still get to South Dakota. Not in the amount of time needed. Well, you don't. Okay. That's, that's for a different <laughs> episode. I guess it's possible. I think there's, there's some of the theories that lend itself to maybe it being something creepy. And there's also some theories where like, like the architect saying that it's bigger than it needs to be. Yeah. That doesn't necessarily mean that it's evil. It could right. just be like, okay, maybe there is something else attached to it. Right. Maybe and, there is some kind of like giant planes that need to get around, get around, you know? Or Let's, like the bunker type idea. I was going to say even the coordinates, right? Yeah. The coordinates, why lie about that? And, you know, wh- what's the point of that? People like – I. I think when it comes to some conspiracies, I'm not going to say all conspiracies, when it comes to some conspiracies, there's certain personality types in people where they like feeling like they have the knowledge or the power, the leverage, where it's like, I know something you don't know. And it's like fighting tooth and nail to manipulate a conversation or a fact until it turns into fitting your narrative. And I think that's where some things get misconstrued. And then all, like I said, if you told me it over dinner. Yeah, that and, disease of like just, what is that? It's all of social media. It's fact checking. It's just people yeah. saying things and then you believe it or it's like old wives tales. Because the burden of proof goes on to the listener, yeah. not the teller. So it's not our bad. This right. is on y'all. <laughs> but don't fact check us. I, I just think it's, I really think it comes down to the idea that aliens told humans that this spot is special. And people like that idea. Yeah, but it's. If you're going to start a lie, don't make one that – like I know we're not 
out there reading coordinates, but there are people that can. Yeah. And it's pretty easy. I, like, I don't know, but I, that one, I just throw it out. Like, I think yeah. that's just something someone said one time. I agree. Somebody could be like, I bet the coordinates go here. And they're like, oh, yeah, Joe said that this. And then Bill said that. And Sarah said this. And so let's rewind a little bit back to the building. The budget was over by $2 billion. So they had a certain amount of money and they spent over that by $2 billion. Well, I think even going back further than that, it goes to the company. Mm-hmm. The company that doesn't exist okayed uh, over budget spending. Right. That's like – Like how did that happen? Like if you really think about it, like what happened there? Well, somebody had to supply the money. Who? Exactly. Who? The, well, there's no way for us to find out. Uh, exactly. I cannot we tell cannot you on this know. podcast. Now, does that – lead what does that mean for you though who owns it now somebody pays the bills like people working at the cinnabon are getting paid by someone that's true that's true i feel like there's probably some conglomerate that owns it yeah so is that the same people that commissioned it don't know we can't know obviously we're not we're not in those meetings i mean maybe somebody just built it went bankrupt then they you know they're no longer a company sold it to me this is like maybe one of the fisher things about it is that someone built it, but we don't know who? See, I don't know why, but I feel like this isn't unique to this airport. There's probably so many buildings and, and companies. Like companies, if you any company that has $2 billion has people they can hire to find loopholes to getting out of things, right? Like it's why super, super rich people can find ways to not pay taxes. It's true. Like if you can hire someone – so. Like, I feel like while, like, it's it's the microscope. I mean, it makes sense. That's what we're talking about today. We're not talking about all of America or the world. But I feel like there's probably so many other buildings and things that are probably this way. Nobody just cares to look into it. Mm-hmm. I, I, I don't know. If, for me, it's something that's... It's suspicious. Like, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying who cares. Like, whatever. Let's move on. Yeah. Like, in terms of the conversation we're having today, it absolutely is suspicious. For yeah, sure. it is. But... It also is like it's not the nail that drives the, the you know drives it in you know like it maybe <laughs> I I it's not the end all be all so let's talk about the statue a little bit it's a unique statue is very blue I don't think it's an entrance I think this is something that got singled out because it stands out by people who buy into it being a new world order place because well it also is it's got the the idea that it is cursed because it killed the person who made it. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it's easy. If you believe, if you, if you're close to leaning to believing in this conspiracy or, or full fledged believe in it. Yeah. You might as well throw it on. It also has that magical element of blood magic. Yeah. It, it to me, it feels like if, if, you, if you're eating the ice cream cone of this being a conspiracy, just throw the sprinkles on top. Like just, mm-hmm. oh yeah, this cursed. Just, yep. Throw it in. For like, sure. It's cursed. For sure. That's where they're holding their meetings because they're using that blood magic. It makes sense. Yeah, I kind of feel bad for the statue. I think people like it now, too. Somebody needs to just camp out, like commit. We need someone to go full snake eater, Metal Gear Solid, just like get some camouflage stuff, you know, sit down and just watch it for at least a month. I need a month. So is there any any rationale that maybe there is a bunker underneath it? Not just the statue, but under the whole thing in general. Yeah, like I said, it would yeah. be worst case scenario that this is where high officials would go. Mm-hmm. I think so too. Now, it could, it could be a scientific place. Maybe it's a place where people do studies. Mm-hmm. If it's evil, then it's like uh, that that Resident Evil movie. It's like the hive, you know? Maybe they're doing tests down there. Or maybe it's the real Area 51 is under there, and that's where aliens have, you know, that's where they're making the next iPhone, you know, with aliens. So what do you think is up with the gargoyles? What do you think is going on there? It's a weird it's a weird artistic choice. It is. There's a lot strange. of weird artistic choices in this in general. Yes. Like I I would love a statement not from like the artist that made the the gargoyles, but from like the the people overseeing the design that like okayed it. Yeah, like I want to like I want to know where like why like for instance, if you're in Cleveland and our our Cleveland Hopkins Airport, yeah. There's a big rock and roll memorial. Because we have the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. That makes sense. It makes sense, you know? Yeah, I I do think it really is good intentions, wrong road. Like, I do think they they did – someone really likes history. And I think they want to be – they wanted to show that, like, 
I know that these things look scary, but they're protection. Now, what if, like, let's go even a, a step further. Maybe this person knew that the New World Order was involved, and they were creating these gargoyles as, like, a form of protection, like, Against, to stop them. Well, and then it's just pointing people toward them, which is interesting. Yeah, I don't know. Um, so the last thing I want to talk about, well, not really the last thing I want to talk about, something I want to mention is the art. It's really just this art that is just not scary, but it's like disturbing imagery. I put it under the gargoyles. Like I, I, I classify that the Denver airport had made some very strange artistic choices. Yeah, I guess that's, that's fair. I, I just don't understand. I don't understand. I'm not going to understand unless it's a message. It, I like, I guess the only thing I think of is that it's a reminder. Like, yeah. This is our past, you know, and even though it's not really like, I mean, it's, it's our past because we were in the war, but it's not yeah. like it didn't happen on our soil or anything. Yeah. Let's, but I mean, it still happened. Let's talk about the whole thing as a whole. So do all these pieces make a whole? What do you think? It's harder to say that there's no way that there's some kind of evil intention when there's so many interesting, weird choices that people make. And I think you just have to step back and think, you know, Occam's razor. Like, what's the what makes the most sense? That some people are just really weird and they make strange artistic choices or there is this organization behind it. I wonder when this started picking up steam. Like, this was built in 95. Mm -hmm. I could be wrong. I would bet in 96 people weren't saying it's satanic. No, but I think after the Blucifer, the Mustang was revealed, I think that's when it really started to pick up. And that was like 2008. See, I was thinking this might be a social media, like, yeah, kind of definitely. getting stuff going. When that's like, actually I just, came out, it was 2008, so that's like early Facebook. I just wonder when, like, what was the switch? Like, was it just people that were visiting the airport that started noting it? And then as things like Reddit, Facebook came around, then they noticed, oh, I wasn't the only one that thought this was weird. And then it started picking up steam. If it was immediately, if it was like late 2000s or early 2010s, like, I, I'm, I'm interested in like, I wonder when the origin of the conspiracy came, if it was as soon as it was built or if it was like the arrival of social media for people who already were thinking it. Or if, like, one person just started it and it spread. I feel like you're right. I feel like people noticed these things and they noted it, wrote it down, and then they posted about it. And other people were like, oh, my God, I've seen that too. And it just kind of bloomed that way, blossomed out of mutual confusion. Yeah. Because it is – it's a huge airport, so you're going to get a lot of people. And people have a lot – I mean, you're supposed to get to – was an hour and a half before your flight? Two hours? It depends on where you're going. But, but yeah. either way, you got time to look around at things. Yeah. It's not like, you know, some places where you're in and out. Like a, a Chipotle <laughs> could probably have a demonic painting, but you're in there – especially if you're doing online ordering pickup, you're not. But at airport, you got nothing but time to kill. It's just strange to me that there's these things, you know, these these concepts that are just on full display. Like if you're truly evil – Satan, you're like, I believe in the devil and I want to do these conspiracies. Wouldn't you want just like a slate white or like something lame, just like not like not, not that the city of Denver is lame, but just like a land uh, like what's it called? Like the towers. Well, yeah, I don't know what you're saying. The view of the city. Oh, like a skyline or something? Yeah, like a skyline of Denver. Wouldn't yeah. you want something like that to blend in? Now, okay, I'm going to be speaking, but I'm not speaking for myself here. Okay. Right? I'm speaking from what I've read, not what I believe. Interesting. Okay. Um, from what I've read from people who believe in this stuff very deeply is that it's almost like to to get in or to be a part of it is to let people know. It's almost like, have you ever seen like, uh, you'll see pictures of people that are like this princess or this uh, queen waved and the way that her middle two fingers were touching like it's like the the pinky and the pointer finger are out and the middle two fingers are touching that's intentional mm -hmm. she's doing it right in front of your face you don't see it but she's making a sign like these or like where they talk about the athletes making the triangle yeah like why is lebron why is you know kanye or jay-z why are they making that triangle with their fingers in all these pictures it's like they're they're not trying to hide it mm -hmm. so i think from that mindset that I'm not saying I believe, I'm just saying this is what I've, I've heard. That mindset, it's almost like, I don't know if you, you have to, 
or it's almost a mockery, like a do mm-hmm. something about it, or yeah. like to get in, you have to present, like you have to show your, like I'm, I'm going to say faith, but I don't mean faith. I feel I like that's you. almost offensive to say faith, but like you have to show you're in it. Almost like loyalty, right? Yeah. So you have to display it, you know? And that's what the this is to some people. It's them showing this. this. What I was thinking about that's interesting is why an airport, right? Be, yeah. And it's almost like because you're getting a lot of like you're so getting much a, foot traffic. You're getting a lot of foot traffic, and you almost think you'd rather have it somewhere. There's not a lot of foot traffic, but it's also like it'll never be like it's somewhere so busy all the time that no one can say it's sneaky. Like it's not yeah. like oh, it's on that mountain. Of course, you know it's like. There's always going to be these people, but also like think about the energy of an airport, yeah. stress, mm-hmm. anxiety, people mm-hmm. missing flights, people saying goodbye to people that they're they're not going to see. I mean, obviously you get the people coming home, and yeah, they, they, their families. But also, what, I think that almost drowns it out. High stress, people get anxious and stuff, and mm-hmm. it's almost like the energy. And people are in such a hurry. And I know it kind of contradicts. I just said you get there early. You have all this time. No, but there is this urgency to it. You, you rush know. past an art piece. So people, you know, it's 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 almost like I guess kind of like the perfect place to be in front of everyone, but mm-hmm. also not top of mind. Like you can clock that gargoyle, but you got a gate to catch. I would love to know if they, if it is like the NWO. I would love to know if they were surprised that people caught on or not. Like if they if they realize people caught on and then they decide to run with it, and make yeah. jokes. And they're like, damn it, how do they, you know, I didn't think people would find out. Or if it was always intentioned for people mm. to find out. So overall, what are you? What are you? Oh, skeptical. Skeptical? Yeah. I mean, the, like the artwork is strange, you know. I mean, there's there are certain things to it that yeah, don't, I don't add up. I don't but, know, man. I think I have to go with viable. Just because there are so many pieces. When you five. put them together, there's more, though. I didn't get all of, the, all of them. I. I'm not blaming you for going viable because there is a lot of strange things. And and honestly, in terms of conspiracies, this is one that I feel like a lot of people don't mind, you know, dipping their toes in. Yeah. Thank you for joining us on this episode of the conspiracies of the Denver airport. Denver airport. I'm starting to lose my voice a little bit. Y'all got your championship. You got Jokic. You got Jamal Murray. You got so many things. You got mountains. You got Beautiful. Sean Sean Payton now as your head coach. I'm going to get it all out there. You yeah. got Russell cooking. <laughs> Let's ride. You got them out there. They're all out there now. You is got that, horses? Is that the end of the episode? I don't feel bad now. I don't know much about I Denver. really do want to travel to Denver, not to go to the airport and potentially see spooky stuff, but I'd like to go to Red Rocks. I'd like to – so we got some listeners we know out there that we'd like to, to see. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'd like to just check out Denver as a city, you know? Yeah, I I mean, it'd be fun. Maybe if we ever do some type of traveling thing, I think Denver, Denver is, we just gotta, we just gotta land an RV. That's all. I think we can do it, but. Or a huge spaceship that we could park in oh. the other section of the airport. For sure. You know, that being said, if you enjoy this episode and you want to let us know you did, you can leave a review on Apple and five stars and you can go to Spotify and leave five stars. And if you like this episode, you want to tell us that you can do that in the episode on spotify and if you like this episode and you're all caught up and you still have drives to do and stuff walks to do with your dog because your dog needs to be walking it's summertime it's the time to be outside there's so much extra bonus content on patreon even more so because we just dropped the entirely new the not tier like the not deer i get it all that content's out there. So if you like this and you want a little bit more and you'd like to help support the podcast, which goes a long way, it is out there for you. But beyond that, we appreciate you all so much for listening. As always, I'm Tyler. And I'm Charlie. And catch us next week on Believing the Bizarre. A podcast as bizarre as you are. <laughs> <laughs>